When I saw that the Siberia Collection was among the free PlayStation Plus games of December 2017, I remembered I actually played these games on the PlayStation 3 not too long ago. Well, I played the first game from 2002, and I had a potentially polarizing opinion about it as well. So, here it goes. It is good to be dedicated to your work, but Kate Walker exaggerates a bit. She's an American lawyer who is sent to a small French village to finalize the takeover of a toy factory. When she arrived, it turned out that the owner died and she needs to track down the new owner, Hans, to sign the contract. This is where the adventure starts. Hans is obsessed with mammoths and is searching for a real one in the last place where they were seen, in Siberia. In the search of Hans, she will travel more and more eastwards, solve puzzles and talk to colorful characters. This all just to finish the job, to get results, and to go home with her slightly possessive boyfriend and her demanding boss. Along the way, you start to think why Kate does this, and she starts to think the same. Is it really so good at home? Better than going on an adventure, even when it is not as comfortable? This is all I can say about the story without spoiling it. As said before, Kate progresses mostly by solving puzzles. Her journey to Siberia was not going very smoothly. She has to improvise to get further. These improvisations are puzzles. Usually you're confined to a few areas where you have to look around, combine objects and find clues in the environment or chatting to the characters. Even though Siberia is a point and click adventure, there's not so much pointing and clicking in the PlayStation version. You can walk around freely in the pre-rendered screens and interact with the objects and characters around. So, the graphics of Siberia are pre-rendered backgrounds with a few animated characters and objects. They still look pretty good for a game that's 15 years old. Okay, to be honest, the design is amazing. The details and the style are pretty unique. It's a mix of steampunk and a European industrial slash communist style, something like that. In my opinion, this is one of the strongest points of the game. As said before, the graphics themselves don't look amazing anymore. It's a low resolution and low polygon mass sometimes. Especially when Kate has to walk far in the background or when the point of view is zoomed out. This bothered me in the beginning, but after a while I got used to it. The sounds and the music on the other hand did stand the test of time perfectly. Even the voice acting, usually a problem for older games, is done pretty well. The music is more of a quiet classic score, if there is music, because some of sections are more or less silent. So the presentation is dated, but obviously very strong. It turned out to be one of the things I liked the most of Siberia. What was the other thing? Well, the story. It is surprisingly strong and very subtle for a video game. Of course, there are more adventure games with strong stories, but this story scores high on both originality and pace. Plus, there are genuinely funny moments as well. The story was what kept me going. And that was because the rest of the game did not age very well. I really didn't like the gameplay, especially the movement. Because you control Kate directly, everything feels very stiff and clunky. You can see that this game was not made to play with a controller. Maybe with a mouse it will be better, but in a way, I doubt it. Why? Well, it's not just the movement that is stiff. So are the puzzles. Maybe I'm spoiled, but a constant loop of looking for objects, making other objects out of them and find strange uses for them is just not appealing for me anymore. If the game was just funny and didn't have a serious theme, maybe it would fit, but I didn't think it was much fun. And that is the most important thing for a game, to be fun. I did enjoy my time with it, but it started to get frustrating after an hour or two. So I just took a guide and played with that. With a guide, it would take you between 3 and 4 hours to complete. And I think without a guide, you can double that. In conclusion, I think that I can only recommend Siberia if you are into old point and click adventures. And if you happen to not play it when it came out. 
If you are just slightly interested, I think it's better to skip this game. Unless you want to use a walkthrough and enjoy the story. So, this is my review about Siberia, the point and click adventure from 2002. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and if you did, leave a like and tell your friends about my channel or subscribe. If you played Siberia, let me know in the comments what you thought about it. Either way, see you at the next review!